Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to know whether your product that you're about to sell on Amazon FBA is going to profit or lose money. It's arguably one of the most important things you need to know as a new beginner Amazon FBA seller or any seller for that matter. If you happen to be new, be sure to like and subscribe, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. I've just pulled up a listing listing doesn't matter, okay? This is an example of what you would potentially be looking at. Now, one of the things that I like to do when I figure out if something's going to profit or not is I go to page one for the search term that actually has search volume, right? We all know how to do that. My minimum several thousand search volume, let's call it. In this case, I've searched melatonin for cats. And do is pull up X-ray by Helium 10. I'm gonna go to this button right here. This is an important button. It's filters, okay? And then I'm gonna to go to this little thing at the bottom most people miss, hide sponsored products from results. And what we get is the organic order in which these products show up in. Call 30, your halfway point. If we scroll to the bottom of this, there's about 60 listings. 30, 34, that's about halfway. So anything with a rank in the top 30 listings here uh, on this page are going to be making a decent number of their sales organically. And at the top of the page, obviously, are gonna be the ones that make the most sales organically on this page, of course, because the organic listings at the top of any search term make the most sales there. Now there's some other things that get factored into it, but conversion rates, another big one. Anyway, out of that, I'm looking at the prices. This is super important, okay? I wanna give myself a fighting chance. I'm gonna use the highest priced bestseller. The listing in the top 30 results organically with the highest price, what do we have? Looks like 1997. That's the listing I would be basing my calculations off of. So just to give you some concept of where we are, that's how we got to this profitability calculator screen. Alert. So when you're doing this, don't mess with the price to try and make it work, okay? See, if I compete with the current highest price listing in this market, can I survive there? Can I profit there? Anything above that, anything above that's a gamble, right? Now, can you price above that? Of course you can. Okay, I'm the highest price listing in my market by a long shot when we get right down to uh, the size of the product and how much I sell it for. However, I based my initial profitability calculations off of, I cannot si sell higher than the highest price listing in the market. Now, the cool thing about the profitability calculator is it's gonna pre-fill out the dimensions of your competitor's product. What that does is it gives me my FBA fees, right? So I, let's just break this down and think, what, what's profit? Profit is revenue minus expenses, okay? You sell something, you make your full sales price, then you take everything that it costs to deliver that offer out. Amazon fees, cost of goods sold, advertising, etc. With that being said, I kind of just went over what your expenses are that you need to be figuring out. If I know my FBA fees, I know relatively what my cost of goods sold are gonna be, then the big one that most people miss is just my advertising. What is my advertising going to cost me? And really quickly, before we got any further, I just wanna let you know that I have a free seven day challenge right below for new Amazon FBA sellers to help you find and vet your first product idea completely free. I just wanted to give value to you guys. Appreciate you being here. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. I will personally email you every single day for seven days straight, giving you a lesson that I spent a considerable amount of time making to help you in your journey. So there's a few golden rules that I like to follow when I'm doing my profitability calculations. It's pretty straightforward and let's get into one of the first ones, which is just where we're starting when we open up that profitability calculator. If I open this and I have done nothing yet, just opened it and this is lower than 40%, I don't even play around anymore because as soon as I start trying to manipulate my cost of goods sold and my other costs associated with launching the product, I'm just not gonna have enough left over. And what that would force me to do is start gambling on the fact that I can sell for a higher price, which like I said, you very well might be able to if you have the right type of customer, right audience, right offer. This is just essentially protecting your downside. If I can survive at the current highest price in the market, then things are shaping up. I don't have to believe as many things are true in order for me to succeed here. I open up Magnet by Helium 10 and I put in melatonin for cats. I'm gonna be able to see that suggested PPC bid. Also gonna be able to see the conversion share for the top three listings. Now as a general rule of thumb, this divided by about four and a half will get me close to the market-wide conversion rate on average. Now, if you do happen to have a Seller Central account, you can go to Opportunity Explorer under the Growth tab and look up the search term that way and see what the search conversion rate is. That will be a decent indicator of search volume as well because you also get click share and the total search volume. So you can kind of convert that into conversion rate uh, market-wide, like industry average uh, conversion rate, right? But through 
a handful of times looking at keywords, trying to deduce a number that everyone has access to. So many of you won't have Solar Central yet. You're just beginning. You might only have Helium 10. Then I found that the little trick with about dividing with dividing by four and a half is a pretty good place to start. I just take 100 and divide it by my newfound conversion rate, which in our case be about 10%. We'll just call it, make it nice and easy for everyone. That gives me the number that I'm going to need to essentially project out how much it's going to cost me um, to acquire a new sale customer however you want to phrase it so we'll say 17 and not percent that's dollars and so obviously that drives you through the floor with every sale on this product now why would that be the case how is that possible how could any seller here make money on that well think of the nature of this product right it's kind of like a supplement for pets and so the repurchase ability may be somewhat high okay if this is 30 servings and you're using it every day it could be as high as in every month or every other month repurchase every other month repurchase on this product. And so if you did establish the best brand here, just to give you some logic here about how that could be possible, how is it that I go in these markets and they're constantly negative, maybe they are legitimately paying for customers upfront, losing money on the customer on the first sale and then making it up on the second or third sale. Now, one of the biggest gems that I'll give you in this video is that I'm not a big fan of that just yet. Okay, and I think beginners would be better off going into markets where they saw that even after making that first sale, they have some profit left over to play with. You'll start to notice that gets pretty tricky. There's lots of markets that are just filled with cheap Chinese products and there aren't a lot of seemingly profitable listings out there, which I think is one of the biggest flaws with the private label mod model and something that so many channels that talk about it seem to seemingly conveniently miss, right? Is that a lot of opportunities don't make money up front. And so are they even opportunities? In the case of a repeat purchase, sure. But there's markets where that's the case. You lose money to acquire a customer and they don't even come back to you. And there's tons of markets that are like that. So what would be the point of that? Well, if you make enough sales like that at a loss and you push your sales rank low enough, meaning you push your listing higher, then eventually the organic sales may outweigh what you're spending on ads and you start to become profitable there. Getting better and better at sourcing and ordering more and more quantities, quantities of product, but the beginning seller doesn't want to do that. And so for all of you guys out there who are just looking into this, just getting started, I would be patient and I would look around a lot and make sure that the market that I'm going into on average has those higher prices that are performing well. I start running my calculations. I'm seeing after my cost to spend on ads, I'm still making money, okay? Because then I can scale profitably with ads or scale up break even with ads to get that organic rank to then start profiting. Does that make sense? And like I said, this is just one step in the journey to discovering what an opportunity looks like. Um, be sure to check out my free challenge. Seriously, my goal is to get a thousand people through this. I put a ton of effort into this and I really wanna make sure that you get in there and see um, just how helpful it's going to be for you. I want to cut through all the BS out there um, and you can reply to me. It is my real email. So I'll see you in there. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Later.